Blessed, blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord who has given us another beautiful Monday. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I greet every one of us in the precious, mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for giving us another day, another beautiful Monday. Uh, Monday <clears throat> in the month of September. Um, let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful hour of blessings of your word to us today. Be thou exalted in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will speak to us regarding the danger in sin, part two. Regarding the danger in sin, part two. Lord, bless every soul in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, touch me. Speak through me. Let my own body become yours right now in your words that you'll be speaking to us regarding to danger in sin, that danger in sin, part two. Let only your name be glorified in Jesus' precious redeemer. I pray and amen. I welcome every one of us in the precious mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for this opportunity God granted unto us to share uh, the word of God with us in this uh, Bible study. I want you to realize that uh, this is to prepare us for our eternity because you are going to actually connect to the truth which will keep you clean and make you walk straight with God. Because for us to be able to make heaven uh, we all need to have this understanding without holiness without holiness no man shall see in the law God requires the fullness of righteousness in us in that righteousness the perfection of holiness will be established in us and then we will have no obstructor to make heaven because this is going to make you to look acceptable before mighty God. God is not going to struggle before he see you. He see time now will be far, far from you. You won't have anything to do with him, nor neither have his material connected with you. And then you to carry the glory of God in your daily characters in your daily languages, in your daily, uh, you know, whatever that you do, because the perfection of fear of God will be there. I want you to look at Psalm 1, verse 1. The book of Psalm, chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinner, not seated in the seat of discomfort. I want you to really think about it. Though we are looking at the danger in sin, part two, the danger is sin. We got need to know the mind of God as a child of God, the type of people you should work with and the counsel that you should receive and you will not do things in the way of sinner you will not walk in part of sinner i want you to listen to this we all need to know that the friendship of the war is enemy to mighty God. When you be a friend to things God does not want, 
you become God the enemy. Because that is what scripture tells us. But God wants you to have the actual truth of him and for you not to lose eternity. Being in the presence of God, walk in the presence of God, do things in the will of mighty God. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 says, Ye have heard that it was said of them of the old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. Shall be in danger of judgment. When we're talking about killing, it's not everybody carry gun, no knife, stab someone to death. That are, that are killer. There are people through their mouth speaking evil of other brethren, saying things that is not of the kingdom of God in which should not even come out out of their mouth. So you don't kill. Such will kill. Such will make that person to be valueless. That's killing. So you don't speak evil to that one. Because the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 29 say, But he that shall blaspheme, blaspheming against the Holy Ghost has never forgiveness, but he is in the danger of eternal damnation. That person is going to be in damnations of eternity will not be part of the kingdom of God. So you don't just speak blasphemy. It is very, very dangerous, very, very dangerous for you to commit such great sin because such person is already eliminated and it has nothing that, you know, could connect that one to the kingdom of God because negativities have already established which we kept you up because sin against the Holy Ghost is what God does not tolerate from any humanity. You got to understand this. Let your mind, you know, connect with the truth of the kingdom and to walk according to the will of God. So, you are not going to be in the danger of destruction before God. In the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 27, so that now only these our craft is, is in danger to be set as not, but also that the temple of the great God dressed the Hannah should be despised and a magnificent should be destroyed, whom all the Asians and the world worship it. We will see that that type of that life, serving goddess, serving goddess, goddess of the Anna, goddess the made with the hand of men. Is what God will destroy. And it's a sin. Right there, when you give yourself to negativities, it is a sin. Right there, when you walk out of the truth of the kingdom of God. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 25. If one man sin against another the judge shall judge him but if a man sin against the law who shall interest for him 
notwithstand they hearken not unto the voice of their father because the Lord will slay them. Can you see that? It's very, very simple to come in a way which is not of the kingdom. When you now begin to commit the sin, you into a great dangerous situation before mighty God. So we need to get this clear. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. That is just man. His man is the judge. And that one can judge him. But if a man sin against the law, who is I interest for him? Who is that one can plead the case? You know, meaning the danger in sin lead to destruction. It's not going to build anything to any perfection. Mm. For Samuel chapter 19 verse 4. And Jonathan spoke good of David unto Saul his father. And said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against thee. And because his work have been to three world very, very good. You can see that the son of Saul, Jonathan, noted the father did not know that Saul, the father did not love David. And it's making him to understand the implication or what is trying to apply against the young man. Because someone who does not sin against you, you are pursuing that one to be killed. It's dangerous. It's not account for. God does not support such evil art. God is not working with that person to succeed against the innocent. Or that one will receive it back fully. Let's look at what 1 Samuel chapter 26 verse 21 said. Then said Saul, I have seen return my son David, for I will no more do thee harm because my soul was pressure in thy heart this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. You now, um, Saul here is calling attention to David to let him know that he had done very bad to him. Because David had opportunity to kill him. But he was worried of the oil of God in here. He was not having the power of approaching. You know, as when we look at the heart of David in regarding that he gave to Almighty God, he did not look at the evil Saul have done. But he's thinking the oil. Because that oil is holy. That oil is pure. That oil is un undiluted. It has no magic connection. And knew anything God chooses. Mm -mm. It doesn't have the grace to oppose no lay hand. David make him. To understand he declared the truth of the kingdom of God so that is why Saul said I have seen when I'm talking of declaring you heard what he said he spoke well 
told Saul that I, you need to know I'm not trying to kill you. I'm, I love you. I cannot kill you. Look at my hand. I deliberately call the edge of your garment to show it to you that right there I have opportunity to eliminate your life by because of the oil which is your hair. That is why people do not even respect the kingdom of God today in man of God. And I'm sorry, many man of God are not even men of God. The title has been messed up just like David, uh, just like Saul did, because Saul messed up the anointing, Saul messed up the glory God placed on his head. Out of envy, a young man, a young man, which is supposed to be on the side of him and walk with him, having understanding of God, a great man God have already shoes that is coming after him. What he's supposed to do is to stand in the path of the kingdom of God, appreciate who God have already shoes in his own lifetime. That God have shoes another king after me. Because God still give him life every day. Let me let you understand this. Do not envy. It leads to sin and to destruction. I'm begging you in the precious name of Jesus because we are going to take a different route step right now regarding to sin or whoever that sinned. Now, look at the book of Romans. Romans chapter 2, verse 12. For as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. And as have many have have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. You need to understand this. No, no one is going to escape. No excuses of any sin being committed. If you commit sin, the judgment is waiting. If you commit any sin, the judgment is still waiting. Look at Saul. Even for the fact that he has committed the sin, is still ruling as a king. Okay. Maybe I go to behind. Look at Judas Iscariot. He was with Jesus and embezzled many, many all the time. God refused to let him die. He still allowed him to be committing and he was just he's still in that sin and he's living in the sin and walking in sin every day that he walked with Jesus by taking the money that is not belong to him for himself. I want you to think about this. Don't say because judgment did not come to you. Don't say judgment did not come to you while you are sinning. Okay, God is supposed to judge me. No. The Bible says he patient. God is very, very patient. He's very, very patient. Because the love that they have for you is waiting for your repentance time. Want you to change. It doesn't want you to die in that sin. So the danger in sin is judgment which surely come. Uh, you got me to think of whatever that you do. However, 
devil wants you to look at it to justify yourself but the word of God cannot be broken the reality of God must surely establish because we are going to a stage whereby God wanting to open our understanding from error of misinterpreting the word of God for some people to remain in sin as if because you claim that you give your life to Jesus adultery is still in you lying is still in you stealing is still in you and no there is a glaring truth of the kingdom of God in which wanting to expose most of those into details of understanding Standing of what God wants you to know. Please don't quote me wrong. Don't quote me wrong. Because the light must brighten. And the brightness is the truth that we reveal the actuality of mighty God. Let's look at verse. 16 chapter 5 of Romans. Romans chapter 5 verse 16. And not as it was by one the sin, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Many offenses to just people are misinterpreting this place a lot. They were using their mind, you know, to think of what the world is saying here. Let me read it again. And not as it was by one the sin. We know the first sin come from Adam. The first sin come from Adam. God does not want her to remain in that. So, is the gift for judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. That free gift is Jesus. That free gift is Jesus that will let you have a great freedom in having the freedom judgment. You are going to get freedom judgment, not to condemnation through one. Just be following me. Romans chapter 5, verse 19 says. For as by one man disobedient, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. We are is he talking about Adam and Jesus Christ? Because through the disobedient by eating the fruit, they are not supposed to eat. Men were judged to die. And we are still dying today. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now I'm going to explain this place better. It says that Jesus Christ has come to die for us. Without his blood being shed, we are not going to get, you know, the glory which we watch his sins which we committed away and uh, after his blood cleansing us that make us to be righteous but not for us to go back to those things we've been cleansed from because a lot of people just look at this war and they always say because Jesus has died for my sin, I ain't got no problem. I believe him that he died for me. But you are still telling lies. You are still stealing. 
you are sitting no 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 it's not standing for you in that area because of one war here one shot i mean you say so by obedience of one shot many be made righteous because his blood will watch you and it will keep you in path of righteousness not to go back to the things of the world you are going to get it better right now you are going to get it better if you look at chapter 5 verse 20 say moreover the lord entreated that the offense might abandon but where sin abandoned great did much more abound i want you to look at this place a lot of people miss this place a lot greatly they miss it they only think in as small you confess jesus grace abound that if you commit sin again without repentance without standing in the truth of god you just begin to commit sin and live like a worldly people grace about no it's not like that because devil wanted to convince a lot of people to this wrong listen to this john 10 10 says the thief come and not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy he said i have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly if you look at this and if you look at what romans chapter 5 verse 20 is making us to understand christ came to rebuild and restore what we lost through adam and eve because everybody was fully living in sinful nature and they continue in characteristics of that evil to the essay in chapter six man so much annoy god and it destroyed all men only noah and his family and from the S so from the instruction of noah abraham came out abraham came out fine by god himself to really see who we stand in the will if you look at abraham all is day with god nothing god corrected him corrected him for that he went back to do no was god telling this shall not be touched it will bow for repentance and watching god if you look at chapter 17 of genesis Genesis chapter 17. Let me quickly call attention to this. I want you to hear this now. And when Abraham, I'm reading from verse 1, and when Abraham was 99 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect walk before me god is calling him to fullness of righteousness i want you to look at what god said and in verse 3 what uh, abraham did and i will make my covenant between me and thee and we multiply thee exceedingly verse 3 and abraham fell on his face and god talked with him God talked with him, saying, You know, God now assure Abraham that in perfection, that is when he's going to get the fullness of his glory. So we see when he get to Abraham, from Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, from the Jacob to a tribe of Israel. And from the twelfth type of Israel, our Savior appear in order to eradicate 
or the nature of sin in man i'll read verse 10 again john 10 10 the thief coming not but to steal and to kill and to destroy i i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly abundantly is for eternity for eternity we will die no more and live like god but not in sin not in sin in romans chapter 6 verse 1 what shall we say then that is where we're going now what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that the grave may abound verse 2 god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein can you see that so absolutely when you actually burn again the sin will no more have power over you because you are going to dare to the flesh okay let's look at chapter 6 verse 6 chapter 6 verse 6 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin, of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin you know that is the purpose of christ christ come to eliminate it and empower you when the grace rested upon you sin become what will not interest you because your body is being crucified with him that means you are dead in nature to commit sin you are dead in nature to commit sin that old man is already crucified the body of sin has been destroyed your spirit man is ruling strongly then you will not be able to commit sin you will not be lying you will not be doing things that is wrong and that is why once you are born again you two, you need to know you must get that understanding aware of truth that no sin cannot walk in my way that is what is going to make you find it difficult to commit any little sin because the fear of god will begin to dwell in you when the fear of god dwelleth in you the fullness of glory of god will keep you straight in truth of his kingdom because you've been crucified you've been crucified you've been crucified look at verse 2 of chapter 6 roman for god said he said god forbid out shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein it's not possible when you are dead you can never go back to sin because the purity and uprightness of god is going to be so unique in you it doesn't matter what people will tell you they might call you names they can call you anything because you are no more part of that nature you've been separated your body is already dead to any kind of sin that is why you see a lot of children of god that actually born again 
You don't see traces of unrighteousness in them. I'm not talking of nowadays a lot of people having the nature of sin in them. You can see it through their language, through their character. Uh, because the things of God is clean. Clean is clean. No manipulation, no manipulating act in anything of the God. Because you can just walk straight and so upright. But when people are expecting something else, manipulation comes in and they call it wisdom of God. Sin, wisdom of God. Do that is Carlos have been doing it. Among the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, believe Christ will not do anything until when his end come the danger swallow him the danger because uh, from little practicing you will be graduating and falling gradual and gradual And before you know what happened, shame that you have toward the wrong becomes something you are no more care. Even you'll be looking, you look in the word of God that will be supporting your negativities. Romans chapter 6 verse 7 says, He that is dead is free from sin. Can you hear that? It's not talking about physical death. It's talking about why you are living. Sin become nothing to you. It's saying that it's not possible for you to commit sin. Nothing will interest you to sin. So that means you're dead. You're dead. And when you dare to sin, you are free from sin. It's not that temptation will not come, but because you are dead to sin, the power for you not to commit sin, you will get it instantly that this one is taking me to destruction. This one is taking me out of God. This one is leading me to another error. Finally, chapter 6, verse 10. Say, for in, in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lived, he lived unto God. So, when you die to sin, that may the fullest righteousness will leave you. He said, he died unto sin once. Once. And there some people normally criticize it, but I don't know how easy it to them. When you die to sin once, that means you know go back to commit sin. You know go back to do what is not right before mighty God. You are totally set free from sinning. You are totally set free from sinning. But he, I mean, but in that he lived in living unto God. You need to get this clearly. You are living for eternity. Because the standard of your holiness have matched with heaven. We need to really understand this. If you don't get it, 
can a little be dangerous for us for us to be able to make heaven I want you to think right now begin to look at yourself are you really dead to sin if you don't die to sin you can't make heaven holiness cannot rule over you purity you are far from it and the danger behind it all heaven such person will not make you know, one thing that usually uh, come to me is I look at the time when I was a 10 years old, 15 years old, get to 30, moving forward, 50, got to 50, got to 60. Then I look at myself. I look at myself. I remember all those times. I remember life I live. But yet, does not leave my brain. You to think. It's only the number make you look old. Because when you are 60 plus, like me, you will not and you will never try to ignore the actual truth of the kingdom because you have to count your age count that number you may be in tarry yes you come into this level you might even be 70 now above my age you might be 80 and God is giving you grace and understanding to understand the accuracy of truth of his kingdom for in that he died he died unto sin be one be the one that let all your nature die to sin. Roman system. It's only once. This can happen once. That is what he says. But in that he liveth. He liveth unto God. That you've come to realm of fullness of fullness of righteousness. children of God understand the danger in sin wake up from whatever devil want to use against you and let righteousness prevail let truth rule over you you know once you die in sin, the glory and the truth of God will begin to rule over you till the day of our last day, if Jesus Christ tarry. You're not involved in anything called negativities. Understand the danger. The danger in sin, understand it. Thank you. And God bless you. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for the war that you revealed to us regarding the danger in sin. I know, God, the word have come to us and to all the people that will listen to this message. God, I pray this war will not die. And the truth of you, Jehovah, will remain with us. Lord, keep us to abide in truth. Even what is happening now is shaking a lot of people. 
we are not going to be shaked. The power of his great will remain with us. We will not look back when we stand to the end until we see our Savior in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let this word go, error, and tell the kind of it. And let it, O oh Lord, set your people free, and let the beauty of your glory remain in them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray it, and amen. And amen. Next Monday, I will not be available because I will be going to jury. It's the law of the nation here. So that will not make me to be available on Monday, which is on the 16th. But all that week, I'm going to be free. God bless you and thank you for watching. Please share this message. Bye-bye.